greetings. I bid you peace and good health. And greetings. Greetings to all you nerds out there, fellow nerds. Greetings to your astronomers out there. Thank you for all of your feedback during the years. Thank you to the real physicists out there. Greetings to you. Greetings to concerned citizens and just the curious. You're looking at 171 angst angstroms, which is 17 nanometer extreme, extreme ultraviolet, usually uh, emitted by electrons. And they've doctored and I mean helio viewers messed up half the time but sometimes they change the speeds the durations they ch sometimes they just completely omit frames and so but ever since we discovered uh, a, a way to kind of visualize the particle layers in the actual atmosphere uh, it requires you to tilt your computer screen back have a large screen and a good high definition image uh, on a cell phone, I don't know how this will play. But since we did that, we went back to Helio Viewer and looking at different areas of interest and then kind of layering other wavelengths and experimenting with the particle enhancements. But also showing you what's kind of what's happening currently on the sun. So anytime you go to a particle enhancement, be tempted to tilt your screen back. Those flashes, though, are very extreme forms of radiation, the flashing part. And if you notice, the surface of the sun appears from time to time to be flashing, like right now. There's... There's a flashing going on along the entire surface of the sun, but I do think it matches the active region flashing. And I think there's such a high density of particles that when the active regions flash like a light bulb, the rest of the, the gases flash. And you can't say there isn't gas because I'm showing you layers and layers of... of um, particles right now and the dark blue high movement is is really where a lot of particle collision is happening so the Sun has an atmosphere those are almost like clouds that are uh, invisible to the aperture settings that they're using really interesting watch watch this surge of particles come in you'll see much fluxing in the flashing the, the flashing. Look at that wave. Whoosh, just coming right at us, probably from behind the sun. I wonder why. So that was so impressive. I wanted to go ahead and, and run it through a couple more times trying to see all the details that we can. Again, tilting the screen back on, on, the, uh, on the rendering. amazing you can get boundaries or bands way out in the corona but look at that wave come through that's amazing I, I slowed it down run it through again and just a surge of flashing and you can't tell me that's an anomaly of light it's, it's not it, it this is a structural program that renders out structure so it, if there's no structure, there's no, there's no image. This is a filament. We watched it turn in and start glowing. Uh, that was kind of cool. Um, and then again, I don't understand the 171 nanometers. Excuse me, I keep calling them nanometers. 171 angstroms is 17 nanometer radiation. And I don't understand why it seems like the time frames are not progressing and a lot of times they leave out certain time frames so if, if you 
try to produce a video over a certain time frame, you may only get, you know, an hour when you're looking for a day or two. But that's just weird how slow that video moves when I go to 171. This is an overlap of 304 and 211 angstroms to, to show you various details and see what would happen. <coughs> but again, you're looking at a cloud layer over this filament. Prominent is really what it is, a prominence. And the prominences always look like balls of plasma, but they're not. They're strands. And in the center is a real high spinning vortex that is, you know, being surrounded by dancing filaments. Uh, it just, uh, these are all vortexes. This is, reminds me of a EF-5 on Earth that has small satellite tornadoes, which are actually the most destructive are those satellite tornadoes. And, but then again, when we render, uh, we, we get much particle collision going on above the sun in the actual corona. That's where the flashing and the highest degree of movement you see. But what an amazing image, uh, taking a ball of plasma and refining it down to the actual individual vortexes. That, that's just amazing. Amazing, amazing stuff. Truly amazing. And I'm so happy to share this with you. Now, just leaving the frame was a, a active region that just sent off. But I really do think what triggers this is particle collision. Like, here you have one that's turning in. We have much high-density particles flowing in through the magnetic field lines into the active region. And you can't keep forcefully slamming hot particles together without creating a fission reaction, a chain reaction. You can, and you have fusion chain reactions, which are more gradual. Then you have the real flashy fission. And it spreads to other particles in the loops as you begin a chain reaction of fusion and fission. Fusion acts more like a fuse. Funny how that uh, play on words is actually very, very appropriate. Fusion burns like a fuse. So here, uh, here, but the real, the real humdinger is this channel has been maintaining all along for the last 10 years that the that the sun is the cause of warming and that the cause of the sun warming w was uh, the actual corona of the sun which is actually already hotter than the surface plasma the corona of the sun is actually experiencing a, a lot of co particle collision and ionization of extra particles which releases tremendous amounts of radiation and energy and light and and since now we have identified particles layers in the actual atmosphere of the sun that appear to be mostly neutral except for the ones that are show a high degree of movement but so you're looking at layers of neutral particles and you know that can only be heavier elements it can't it can't be hydrogen and most likely that close to the sun it's probably not helium although there is neutral helium that exists on the sun but it's hard to imagine helium hanging out in the atmosphere and not not becoming ionized and we, we've seen articles about how all of a sudden mysteriously the alpha particle counts have suddenly risen on the Sun in just the last solar cycle itself I mean 
that should be an eye opener for everybody. Increased al alpha particles are highly radioactive. But the particle itself that doesn't have the penetrating power as do the subatomic particles like uh, neutrons, protons, electrons, muon, positrons, neutrinos. So it's easier to stop alpha particles. Now, the, but they do, they emit radiation, and radiation is radiation, and after a certain point, it requires a tremendous effort to block uh, that energy. Now that now that we've like, I mean, I, 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 you know how when you when you prove a case open and shut in court, it's almost as good as a con signed confession, right? Open and shut, and to me, this layering technique is the final the final piece of an entire puzzle. The whole puzzle, we have found every piece of the whole puzzle. And I don't think there's any more pieces to, to find. And so what we found with the, with the particle generation and the rendering, what we, what we found is answers to a lot of questions. The atmosphere of the sun explains a lot. It explains quite a bit now. It would explain the flashing that we see going on, not only in the corona, but it seems like on the surface plasma as well. Um, and, and we pick it up on almost every satellite under various wavelengths. And not to mis mistaken for the pinpoint flashing, the pinpoint emissions that we always, always have been showing you. And actually... I don't know anybody else who shows you that. So, I, you know, I don't know how more amazing I can make a science channel when I show you things that nobody else has or will or can or are allowed to show you. And so, again, thank you for your feedback. Um, thank you for your clues. Thank you for your tips. Thank you for, the, I mean, some of the most valuable and eye-opening pieces of information uh, that I've run across were, were given to me by somebody else. I, I didn't find them. A lot of stuff I've tripped over, about half of it, you know. Uh, I, I'm like, how, do, how in the world did I trip over this and trip over that and keep tripping over stuff? But... That's half the equation. The other half is you. So thank you for the tips. Thank you for the feedback. And remember, uh, feedback is always welcome. Um, and if you have links or data, go right ahead.